All right, great. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today and talk with all of you. Um, I mean, really, I think what we heard over and over again this morning is how important data is, right? Um, where it runs, um, you know, is, is a part of the decision and, you know, is an important one. But at the end of the day, we're all in the data business. Whatever business you're in, you can do your business better if you've got data that you can take advantage of and really get those insights from. And so we really believe um, that, that data is that new competitive advantage, right? And we're building um, all of our services and our mission and what we're trying to accomplish to really help you uh, get better at your goals, right? Um, drive better business outcomes. Be able to leverage data in real time, where it's coming from, when it's coming from, right? Out at the edge. Um, be able to deliver it to your clients and your consumers, um, your employees, right? Your staff, where they need it, when they need it as well. And, and we really believe that uh, you know, businesses that use data effectively uh, can really change the game, right? Um, Steve uh, kicked off this morning asking, you know, are you going to be the disruptor or the disrupted, right? And data really is kind of the key, I think, to unlocking that potential to be the disruptor. Uh, and so we're going to talk today about some of the tools that we're providing uh, within IBM and on our cloud uh, to be able to help you accomplish those goals. And we've probably all heard lots of different stories before, right, about how businesses who leverage analytics and gain that insight uh, do so much better than their competitors. Right? I don't need to kind of rehash the stats for you. You've probably heard them, um, you know, many times. And probably all of you have projects within your own businesses where you would love to be, you know, if you could answer this question, if you could sort of accomplish this next thing, right? You already know the things that you want to be doing. The challenge is really how to get there quickly, effectively, securely, right, in a way that's cost effective for you to do so. And while all these things are great, there are challenges, right? Um, while data is so critical and can be so powerful, it's also not the easiest thing always, right? Um, there's sometimes there's challenges understanding, you know, how you can use some of the advanced analytics. Uh, a lot of time, even when you're doing that, is spent on data preparation, dealing with huge volumes of data, um, figuring out how to prepare it, how to cleanse it, how to get it into the right places, how to ensure your application can get access to it, and you know, being able to get at that data as well, especially when you talk about um, existing enterprise assets that you may have, and how do you bring those into kind of your holistic story as you're trying to build out those systems of engagement, right, and really kind of bring all those systems together to get the maximum potential out of it. And, you know, even these, the simple project often involves multiple people, multiple steps, and if you're doing this all in-house, you probably have pretty large teams um, working on this, right? Managing uh, your databases, managing your, your um, infrastructure, um, operating it, um, you know, it's, it's a significant investment to uh, really manage the volume and complexity of data and data projects that most companies have today. And so we really believe that our mission as part of Cloud Data Services, which is part of the broader IBM Cloud and Analytics initiatives, is to help make this simpler. Right? We really want to provide a very complete portfolio, giving you a broad range of tools in your toolbox. Um, to really be able to, uh, you know, use a best of breed um, type of tool or a best fit tool for the type of the job that you have. And not just provide silos of them, but provide an integrated experience to be able to use those so that we can help with um, making that transition um, between these different types of data sources and data capabilities easy for you. And we really believe in deployment flex flexibility and avoiding lock-in. Um, this is something I'll talk about. I think there's a lot of different factors when you think about lock-in and kind of future-proofing, you know, your investment and the business that you're, you know, that we, the decisions you make for your business as you go forward in this area. And we're already quite proven. Uh, we have a lot of different clients um, spanning all different types of industries, uh, maturity levels, uh, you know, what you might consider enterprise, what you might consider startup. Um, and, you know, across healthcare, retail, um, insurance, uh, you know, financial, uh, you name it, right? We're really kind of um, across the spectrum we have a set of clients and uh, we're growing really rapidly, um, constantly getting new folks working with us on the cloud. 
So one thing that I like to kind of, and I, and, you know, to kind of frame some of this about is, you know, when you start to think about, do I go to the cloud? Where do I go? What do I, what should I be doing with my data? Even what type of database? Is really think about your requirements, right? Um, so this morning, right, we got the advice of pick a specific project, right? And I think getting concrete. Um, really helps you to kind of move faster in this space, right, and learn quickly. Um, and so I think, you know, there's a few different categories, I think, of requirements to think about. And I'm not going to go through every single question, as you'll see there's more <laughs> as I build out this slide, But I because I can do a whole talk on this topic alone. But I want to just kind of maybe pull out a few key points. Um, you know, I think one thing is to really think about the type of data that you have and what your requirements are. You know, today is an era of, you know, hundreds of different types of databases out there, right, across the whole NoSQL no area, and you've got all of your traditional relational databases, you've got all your big data and all your other analytical solutions, right? There's a, such a wealth of different technology to help you accomplish your problem, um, help or help to solve your problem, right? And it's a huge opportunity to be able to get the right fit tool for what you're trying to accomplish. And it's also a challenge, though, you know, to kind of figure out, um, you know, once you've even decided sort of what the right uh, t database technology is or data technology, do you have the skills in it, right? Is it something that, you know, are you just sort of going back to, well, you know, I've always used XYZ relational database, I'm just going to stick with it, right? Because you, so you've got the skills, you've got the knowledge, right? It's the, it's the easy you know, sort of position to take. But is that really the one that's going to catapult you, you know, forward in your business, right? And so, you know, when you're evaluating a new project, it's a great opportunity to sort of take stock of, you know, the different type of technologies out there and really find the right one. Because one thing that the cloud can bring you is the ability for someone to take out the hard work of managing it for you, right? So you can focus more. You don't have to develop all the DBA expertise and how to keep you know, a, a NoSQL database up and scaled and running and all of those, you know, challenges. Um, there are a lot of companies, IBM of course included, right, who have experts doing that 24-7 for you, right? So this is a great opportunity um, to really get the right tool. You know, another thing you want to think about is your application and what is kind of the maturity level of your application. Is it a new system of engagement type of application that's going to be changing rapidly? Is it mobile, right? And we all know how kind of persnickety we are ourselves even, right, with a mobile application. You know, if you don't like it, you know, it's out and you're on to the next one, you know, pretty quickly, right? So we just don't have a lot of patience um, for things and we expect, you know, a lot of rapid improvements. And so, you know, is that an, is the application that you're planning to provide to your clients one of those? And if so, are you picking a database that makes it easy um, for you to be able to respond rapidly, right? A lot of the NoSQL databases are great for that and part of why they've taken off because developers are working in JSON, you know, it's the language of web and mobile, and, you know, you don't have to deal with going back to your DBA to get a change window, um, you know, to add another column to your database. And so, you know, there's, uh, you know, the, the maturity and sort of um, flexibility that you need for your application, you know, is a consideration in thinking about the data, database of choice. And then, you know, one that also we talked about this morning, um, but I think often gets kind of overlooked, is, you know, just thinking, you know, about your company culture. Um, where does your company stand in terms of, uh, you know, how willing it is to be cutting edge versus, versus risk averse? Um, and, you know, I think really, uh, this is um, something that is, that's really important to kind of, I think, recognize and sort of internalize, um, you know, clearly. Um, also thinking about, you know, do you have all the data centers? Is this, is running data and managing your data layer your core competency or something that by itself makes you, gives you a competitive advantage, right? And you think about someone like LinkedIn, for example, right? I mean, they're all about their, their data layer and their, their data platform. Um, it's their competitive advantage, and so they want to run it all in-house. While most of us, you know, I started off saying we're all in the data business, while most of us, you know, need to, to get, take advantage of data, that's not necessarily where we want to develop all of our expertise, 
right? We want to focus on our application or on the value that we're trying to provide. It would be great if someone could take care of the hard part of it for us so that we can just get the value out. So you want to kind of think about where you and your team and your project is kind of on that spectrum because it may, you know, impact, um, you know, where you want to go in terms of, you know, the cloud or fully managed versus, you know, potentially a private um, kind of data center situation. And, you know, I talked about having kind of really this breadth of choices. Um, you know, this is exposed just in, you know, our IBM portfolio alone for data services on the cloud. Um, you know, and so there's, there's so many choices out there, and we're going to focus on a few of these that I want to highlight today as well. Um, but you'll see that really uh, there's a lot of open source here. Um, you know, cloud in itself, which is the, the data source that uh, I, I deliver on, um, is based on CouchDB. Um, and we have a huge commitment to the CouchDB community. Um, in fact, we have just sort of refactored um, and made a huge um, uh, investment and kind of donation of all of our clustering capabilities back into the CouchDB community. And, you know, other areas that we're making huge investments are also Spark. Um, we started the Spark Technology Center uh, in San Francisco where we've hired over 300 developers to focus explicitly on making Spark enterprise ready, secure, robust, um, performant, right, and really help to um, drive that innovation straight into the open source community. And I think that, you know, when you think about sort of lock-in and what kind of vendor, you know, do you potentially want to go with, I think this is an important factor, um, right, because in a lot of our clients uh, like this on Cloudin is that they know that they can also go stand up a couch DB, right, and that they can go use that because we've got, you know, 100% compatibility in Cloudin with all our APIs on couch DB. And so that helps to give you a peace of mind right, that you know that you've got the open source backing, you're not into something that's totally proprietary um, or locked in, and that kind of helps you to kind of future-proof, um, you know, some of the decisions that you make. Because um, obviously we know the industry and everything keeps changing, right, and so um, knowing that you've got that open source backing what you're doing, you know, helps to ensure that, you know, the services are going to be on the cutting edge of the innovation, but also to give you that peace of mind. We uh, just did another acquisition um, earlier this summer, um, Compose.io. Um, and this is uh, really a, a data platform focused on uh, delivering open source um, databases. So again, sort of reinforcing some of our commitment to this area. But what is really cool about Compose is um, really what they've built in as um, their, their platform for the data. Right? And when I think about Cloudin as well, um, you know, we're not worried about you know, pushing back a lot of you know, our technology into the open source community because we really believe our value is how we manage the service right? and how we provide that fully managed 24-7 um, experience for you. Um, and what Compose has done is really build out this platform that's very easy to plug in databases into. Um, they've got a great sort of um, logical... Um, logic built into the system where they sort of divided what's common to databases with what's maybe specific to a particular implementation. Um, so backup and high availability are kind of all included um, with all of these services and we're able to, you'll see us at a pretty rapid pace, continue to expand the breadth of databases and, and types of databases that we're able to deliver um, on this platform. So a really kind of strategic uh, investment for us as IBM in this space. And you know, another thing that's important is where you can run, right? So certainly we've heard a lot about um, software. Um, you know, there's a, you know, the options of bare metal as well as virtualized, um, really a global reach. Um, so you know, this can be important particularly for, um, and, and it's one thing to think about too in terms of if you want to go you know, totally public or potentially a hybrid approach as well. Because um, certainly there are, you know, regulatory laws or um, compliance things in certain countries. Um, so perhaps you want to be able to have data in Germany, but even if you're someone who's invested in a lot of data centers, if you don't have a data center there, um, this is maybe an opportunity where you could leverage the cloud to help take advantage of a sort of location-specific data center. 
um, and products like Cloudant, um, which we'll, we'll talk about a bit more later, um, have a lot of replication capabilities in it. So you're able to easily move data between clusters um, that are in different geographies, as well as potentially you know, private behind your firewall and then public. And you're able to uh, be able to set only specific sets of data to be able to move across those different boundaries. So you can really be in control um, of securely managing where your data goes, where it doesn't go, um, but still getting that sort of maximum value of leveraging the public cloud as well as potentially your private cloud where you could keep um, potentially really sensitive data back behind the firewall. And you know this, this notion of sort of um, you know, having a spectrum of solutions is also something that's important and something that I think also goes to that no lock-in message. Um, so you know, here, um, you know, this applies to many of our offerings, but if you think about DB2, there's certain, certainly the package software version of DB2 that um, many know. Um, there's also, for some of it with Natiza and thinking about more of our warehousing options, there's, um, you know, there are the appliance approach, right? And then we also have started to offer on the cloud a DB2 hosted. Um, and this is really where you start to get into the cloud and you know, there's really kind of a spectrum here, right, of how much control do you have over what you're doing um, versus how simple and easy it is, right? And, and it's a spectrum, right, to be able to kind of be thinking about. And our, our hosted DB2 on the cloud is really sort of for folks who want to start to dip their toe in their water. You know, they've got maybe a finely tuned DB2 instance that they're running um, back at home. Um, and, you know, and they want everything configured and set exactly how they want it because they know that's what works for their application. Um, in the hosted environment, you've got that opportunity, right? We're basically providing the infrastructure and um, we'll provide the install as well as do kind of the patch management for you um, so that then you can just, you can focus on managing your database yourself, um, have it configured exactly how you like. Um, and be, but be able to still get some of those benefits of the cloud, right? So that can be kind of a good stepping stone um, for bringing uh, an application forward. And then it goes all the way up to our managed service. Um, and we have it um, for transactional. We also have it for DashDB, which is our warehousing version of this service. And this is really a, you know, a, a marrying of some of our DB2 Blue uh, in-memory columnar technology as well as some of the capabilities within Natiza um, to really bring like a best of breed warehousing and analytical solution on the cloud for you. Again, fully managed um, and with some great integrations as well with some of our other services like Cloud. And so, you know, working with someone like IBM, you know, we're able to provide you this whole range of choices. So as you start on your journey into the cloud, you know you can kind of graduate, right, or move up different levels, or depending on maybe even a specific application, um, you want to go one way, right, versus, you know, other applications you want to sort of keep um, the way you've been doing them. And it gives you that opportunity to work, you know, work with one vendor, leverage your common skill sets, and uh, be able to, to do that easily. And, you know, we really believe that, you know, providing you these choices is something that uh, is important um, because it's not a one-size-fit-all kind of database world anymore, um, and neither is the cloud, right? It really is about choice. It's about a lot of that flexibility um, and being able to uh, work with that sort of wherever you want to go. Um, So if we dive into some of these services now, um, you know, these are a few that I'm going to highlight and we'll be talking about a few uh, customer stories with many of these as well. Um, just for sake of time, I'm probably just going to dive right into them and we'll, we'll go through them as we, as we talk about it. Um, so the first one is Cloudant, um, and I've talked a little bit about this, right? This is our NoSQL JSON store, uh, NoSQL database. And I think I said NoSQL twice there. <laughs> um, it's uh, built on top of CouchDB, right? So again, our commitment to open source. Um, RESTful APIs um, to make it easy to develop against. Um, and really, you know, some of the secret sauce around this is that it's a distributed cluster environment. And we use replication internally. We always have three copies of the data, so it's always highly available by definition. We've really focused on durability as a key goal of the solution. 
and it uh, is really meant for operational type applications, web and mobile in particular. Um, and really the ability to kind of push data out to the edges. So I talked a bit about how we can replicate. So we can replicate to keep the data up, you know, up to date within the cluster, but then we can also replicate between clusters. And we actually have a geo load balancing layer on top of that so that um, you basically just by turning on a config, um, you know, when I'm here in New York and I'm on my mobile application, I can be routed to the nearest cluster. When I was out in Las Vegas a few weeks ago for the Insight conference, you know, it would, it would route me automatically to the West Coast cluster. And we have a lot of clients um, that do this, particularly for mobile applications, um, to really be able to take advantage of getting their content out to the edges, and this can be sort of geographically dispersed. Yeah, is there a question? Uh, so the question was, how many places do we have clusters? And we uh, support any software data center, so all 40 plus worldwide. Um, Cloudin is a little unique um, because of our heritage. We also run on AWS, Azure, and Rackspace. So we can be deployed to any uh, data center that any of those infrastructure providers offer. Yeah. A, I'm sorry, a so, syncing? Yeah, like, you know, sometimes, like, it goes to one, but, you know, like, you don't want to be with the data. Just, you know, it's kind of like, you know. Sure, yeah, sure. So sh uh, the question was, you know, because we replicated, have we ever seen any clients that have issues with syncing? Um, and so, you know, one thing about Cloudin is it is an eventually consistent system. So um, you wouldn't want to do a credit card transaction on it. Not that we won't lose, it's not that we're going to lose the data. But if you want to immediately sort of read your write, um, it's probably not, you know, the ideal solution for that type of use case. But you know, I like to think about, like, a super, super simple example, right? If you think about a retail um, web presence um, and you think about, say, a shopping cart, right, um, that's a case where it's a great use for something like Cloudin because, you know, the schemas are changing, all the objects may have different, met, you know, all the items might have different metadata about them, something that you want to be flexible and be able to enable quickly, um, right, and continue to develop on. But when you go to push, hey, now I want to give my credit card, that's when you want to use, you know, an OLTP system that has ACID um, transactions. In general, though, I mean, it's usually it's such an infrequent um, case that, you know, it's really not a, a big concern at all, right? And um, like I said, lots of our, lots of our clients um, use Cloudin for, you know, all their web and mobile applications. So, um, you know, when we write, we write it out three times. As if, but if you want to, like, write it in, like, within, like, you know, immediately read it, if you want to read it, like, just, you know, a tiny bit, often it'll be there, but it may not. You'll have to retry your read. Um, but for many applications, that's okay, right? And the developer agility that you get um, by that small compromise um, is worth it. Well, three, five seconds is no problem. <laughs> I'm talking about like a lot shorter. Um, yeah. Okay, so, you know, one example um, of a client is ComData. Um, and this is one, you know, one other thing about Cloudin is we have really strong geospatial indexing capabilities. And so they're basically a, a credit card company, really, but they focus on fleet management um, for their clients. And so uh, what they really did was provide a system of engagement type application um, to provide to their drivers. So on average, um, we, uh, fleets spend about $85 million a day on gas um, and fuel. And often they have special deals with, um, you know, different um, fuel providers. But their drivers don't always know that, don't know where those, those spots are in their route. And so what they've really done is provide an application that goes to the drivers for their clients to be able to provide them real-time information about what's coming up on the routes that they're going on, information about rest stops, um, what kind of amenities are there, you know, what gas stations are going to have the best prices, so that then it pushes the decision making down to the driver to make the right, to, the best decision because you're arming them with all that information, right? So this is really one of those system of engagement, you know, mobile type of applications where you're adding significant value, um, and this is, a, this is a, a credit card company, right, who's providing this then to their clients and their drivers. So for sake of time, I'm going to skip 
the next case and move on to some more of our services. Um, so DashDB, um, this is, a, you know, as I talked about a little bit, is our analytical warehousing um, capability. And we've got a really strong integration from Cloudant to DashDB. This is where part of our portfolio of cloud data services starts to add more value for you. So we've actually taken um, capabilities from our IBM research team to be able to inspect the schemas that, that are inherently in the documents um, within Cloudant and figure out what those are and then be able to create them in DashDB and then move all the data for you. And it really is like a push of a button. You go up and sign up for a Cloudant.com account, um, you, can, you can get it and try it out. Just go to the warehousing tab and you know, see how easy it is. Yes. Yeah, so the question was, have you used this with Cognos? So yes, DashDB, you can use with any BI tool. Um, you know, any, this is you know, anything that speaks relational, basically. So certainly you can use it with Cognos or IBM provided tools, um, as well as SPSS. You could also use it with other tools, Tableau, MicroStrategy, you know, the works. Um, R is built in if you want to do predictive modeling. Um, so there's a lot, of, it's very lot of rich capabilities um, that you can leverage to get a lot of those real-time insights. Uh, and, you know, one of our clients is a, uh, a firm in the UK um, called Red10, and they are basically helped to provide marketing insights. And so they bring together a lot of different data sources um, and want to provide um, kind of some of their special sauce sort of on top of it, um, but then really be able to provide that analytics on top of the data to their clients um, in real time and, you know, very quickly. And you can see some of the you know, they saw some amazing query performance um, improvements when they moved to this solution. Um, and it's something that, again, they've got a really small team. They want to focus on their analysis, not on running a database, right? And so they're able to focus their resources and really de deliver, you know, incredible results to their clients and to their business um, very quickly and easily with a very small amount of investment. Um, and so this is sort of the case where I was talking about where we have a pretty common, you know, general architectural use case where you could have, you know, two different cloud uh, clusters syn syncing, providing direct access um, to your, your web application. Um, and this replication is also great for offline access as well because we can sync it out to the mobile device. People can work off of it, you know, directly from their mobile device there. When they're connected, they'll sync. Um, otherwise, have the data locally already copied and then provide that push button um, connection to DashDB um, and also provide then connectivity to Watson Analytics um, on top of DashDB as well. Um, so we also offer Big Insights on the cloud, which is essentially our distribution of Hadoop. Um, and so again, this is one of those things that can be very difficult to manage, have to deal with scaling. Um, you know, and, and we've got um, you know, subscription pricing here that can provide you flexibility. Um, and ensure that you're able to, again, focus on the insights that you want to get out of this um, rather than managing complex technology. Um, and we have a pharmaceutical company who's um, really been able to do a lot with this, so really bringing together a lot of um, their electronic, electronic uh, medical record data um, and be able to get a lot of insights um, from the trials that are going on um, to be able to, uh, you know, move much more rapidly in terms of um, determining what, what's results and how to iterate quickly. And we talked a bit about DB2 on the cloud. Um, this was really, as I said, kind of that hosted version of DB2. Gives you that complete control. Um, so you can, you know, bring, uh, you know, existing application forward, get a lot of the um, cost benefits um, from the cloud um, while still maintaining that level of control. Uh, and lastly, uh, Apache Spark. So this is something that is certainly, um, you know, I think uh, very big in the industry now that people are starting to use and really leverage um, as part of their overall analytics story. You know, again, we've got some great integrations here now and that we're continuing to evolve. Um, we've got a, a connector from Cloudant to Spark as well. Um, so you can, again, be able to bring your data here. Um, and it's really uh, complementary, right, with Hadoop and um, being able to do a lot of in-memory um, analytics uh, very quickly and easily in ways that 
um, haven't been able to do before. And we, like I said, we've, IBM has made a huge investment um, in this area, continuing to do so. We've also donated some machine learning technology to the open source um, community around Spark as well. So lots of cool um, data science, um, uh, you know, kind of genre machine learning, AI type of technology leveraging Spark. Um, and we've actually rebuilt DataWorks, um, which is our sort of data movement capability within the cloud, both from um, private to public as well as between services, is actually rebuilt on top of Spark as well. So we're leveraging it ourselves um, and kind of getting the power out of it to take our technology to the next level as well. So, you know, again, what we're really going after is trying to provide, you know, this rich set of complete and integrated capabilities to enable, uh, you know, your developers to be able to focus on what they're good at, right, which is, to, which is creating rich applications that provide great business value um, and give you that flexibility that you need for your business as you progress in terms of, um, you know, interest in pushing more to the cloud, being able to start, you know, we've heard a lot about Bluemix Local and the different options there, right, and being able to progress going forward into, you know, a dedicated or public cloud type of situation. Um, and lastly, just that we are open for data. Um, you know, we are, we are open source. Uh, we are open to where you want to run, whether it's across 40 plus different data centers worldwide. We are open to public, private, and hybrid and giving you that range of choice. Um, and we are open 24-7 managing and running it for you so that you can sleep more. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, if we've got time, I can take more questions. The, the buzzer ran out on me, so I stopped. <laughs> yeah. CouchDB is uh, the open, so like, um, it's the open source uh, NoSQL JSON document store database that Cloudant is built on top of. So you could think of others in the genre like MongoDB. Um, it's a similar technology, although it has obviously some different implementation. So, so you're, you're actually looking, you want a particular reference of a, of a like Cognos a, customer who has moved from... Like, you know, like, because um, Cognos doesn't really age well, you know, all the traditional database. It's kind of just like, after, you know, a few years, it's kind of moved to database. So we just, like, if I want a recommendation, for example, just for someone to contact you, for example, um, do you really have, like, a use case that... So I think we do. I focus on cloud and more, so I don't know all the specific clients that we have on Dash TV. So how about um, we'll connect afterwards, and I'll get you to our experts to get you our, our reference details. Yeah. Other questions? Sure. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. How do you push data from external databases to Dash DB? So, uh, so we have DataWorks um, as one. I mean, certainly when you get into, you know, tens or you know, we've we've done a lot of work on increasing the speed of our pipe and our connectivity. So, um, you know, in in terabytes, we can absolutely do um, with with DataWorks. Uh, uh, DataWorks is our data movement technology. Um, you know, if you want to start talking tens or hundreds of data, you know, terabytes, th there's some physics around networks, right? So we'd probably want to work with you, um, you know, directly in terms of, okay, are we, you know, shipping things or what are we doing to kind of to move that scale of data? And most of our competitors are the same, right? There's just, there's some network physics there. 